this session we are also going to have some uh, listening to Honorable Wandai and his team about uh, energy. You know this country is suffering from very serious uh, energy stress. I keep on calling Alex here. Uh, those of us who come from the West, Wamboka, Milemba, Amisi, Wajala and others, I think we suffer more than any other part of the country in power outages and uh, power dips. Sometimes power can disappear in Western Kenya on Friday and it comes back on Tuesday. The entire weekend, there is no power. Yes. Yes. At least we have seen it, but it disappears. The other regions, Kainan says that I've never seen power. So we want uh, Wandai and his team, uh, not, I'm giving Western just as an example, but I'm sure there are many other stressed areas of the country. Uh, we are talking of Kenya becoming a, a middle-income developing country, and you can't do that if you don't have power to turn the engine of the economy. So we need also to hear from you and your team what you are doing, what you can do, and what we can do to make you do what you know, ought to do as a ministry and as a leadership of the energy sector to help the country move forward. Because if the investors we are all looking for to come into Kenya find that our power is too expensive and even when, it's a, when you are ready to pay is not available, it becomes very difficult. A lot of messages from Kenyans in the diaspora. Oh, Mr. Speaker, there is a bill before the House that is going to tax every single income in agriculture I haven't seen that bill yet, but uh, it's supposed to be a bill brought by the majority leader, which I have not seen, I don't know majority of you have heard of this, that there's a bill that's supposed to tax even an egg, supposed to tax a pile of milk. You know, as leaders, don't let this propaganda run ahead of you, because there's no such bill as far as I know. I have also, as your speaker, sometimes gotten embarrassed where you go to a public place like a funeral, and a member who never speaks in the house stands up and says, I'm going to oppose that bill. And says, all man of the, when the bill comes, you don't even see the member in the house to speak, to speak to the bill that he was opposing at a funeral. And I keep on asking my members, you know, when you want to oppose a bill, you look very good in front of the public if you point out what you are opposing in the bill. Because you will vote even on the title of the bill. So you, I have told our leadership many times before that if you count the number of chairs of committees and your vice chairs, this house should never lack quorum at any one time. Because you hold positions of privilege. We pay you extra for being chairman of committees. And we allow you, anywhere you go, to travel in cabins of privilege because you are leaders. The best you can give back to Parliament is never to miss attendance of the House. And that's where I started by asking the Chairman, the, the Majority Leader and the Minority Leader to call out members who have business. We have seen as leadership, and sometimes I call even the whips, to the speaker's office. A member is sponsoring a bill or has a motion. Week in, week out. When the matter is called, the member is nowhere. When the matter is called, the member is nowhere. He has not even briefed the chair that will be away. He has not instructed any member to stand in for them. I think as leadership, we probably will have to reach some agreements that so that we are not continuing to pile work for non-existent or non-appearing prosecutors of their work, that if you appear on the order paper two, three times and you are nowhere to prosecute your agenda, we drop it. So that we don't continue piling work, so that you go and if you are sponsored by teachers to bring a matter to the house, you go and face those who sponsored you out there and explain why you are not in the house when your matter was called. So that we do not continue having piles and piles and piles of work 
for no mistake of leadership, but for the mistake of some of ourselves who are prosecuting that work. I also want Whenever you have a cabinet secretary who you oversight appear in the house, part of your oversight role as a chair is to make sure that you come and hold that cabinet secretary to account. And I say that with the Honorable Pio and I here, because he has been the leader of minority, holding people to account. Now it is his time to be held to account. And when he comes, I would expect that the Honorable Aramat, Honorable Kawai, and members of the Energy Committee, you will be there because you will be interacting with the CS and the PS uh, more often than anybody else uh, to hold them to account and oversight. That is a time to offer real and meaningful oversight. And indeed, when we change our standing orders to allow the cabinet secretaries to appear before the House to answer to questions and statements, the intent was basically to reaffirm our constitutional mandate as a house that oversight uh, these cabinet secretaries. And as Honorable Junet said in passing, uh, the house that can also impeach them. And uh, you've seen we have really done well that in that respect. Uh, therefore, <laughs> let notice be served, not to the one who is here, but to all of them. But uh, should you not uh, up your game? <laughs> the season is here, as Junet says. We lost the finance bill and lost very many good proposals that were in that finance bill because of negative publicity, because of poor communication, and that is part of the reevaluation and reflection we need to do as a house collectively. How else can we communicate better? Besides what we have said, what the clerk and the leader of minority have said that we need to do to engage with the bills ourselves as leaders and be able to articulate better what is contained in this bill so that you are not confronted by members of the fourth estate with questions as to what is contained in bills or even in social media platforms. Honorable Speaker, I remember during the finance bill. This parliament, there have been crisis after crisis. We had a crisis of the finance bill. Now we are the crisis of Rikiji. We don't want another crisis. Now we want to move forward. We are done with the crises. We have dealt with all crises. We don't want another crisis now. To achieve energy security, investment in energy infrastructure must be prioritized. In view of this, we look forward to engaging with the ministry in the course of this retreat so as to learn more about this critical role in energy security and infrastructure. To go to elections, and that will mark the end of time of this parliament. It's our duty to keep reminding you. It's our duty to keep reminding us because time of uh, these kind of instances, not, I mean, to refrain from calling for quorum, to refrain from unnecessary point of orders. For example, speaker, they have, some of them, the direct emotions that come last me, which was rejected by the House, we, our view on the speaker is that we allow those ones to be incorporated in the bills that are elected to be produced before the end of this year to get space on the collapsed uh, financing. It is possible to do what other parliaments do. It is not unusual to go to the US Congress and find a member, one or two members only, addressing the speaker. Because only one person can speak by the National Assembly during the first, second, and the third sessions, and chart a way forward, assess the performance of the leadership, particularly committee leadership, and identify areas of improvement in relation to oversight and marshalling the When they are needed in plenary, we are again going to prejudice the consideration of the business of the House, and then go back to the, our problem of quorum. And the speaker, we also hope that 25th, 2024, which I will speak you have called previously a day not to remind. We also hope that this meeting is going to strengthen strategic alliances with key stakeholders in cementing that we consider the urgent business. Yeah. A lot of business that is before the house. So we want to persuade that we have extended sitting times and if possible, hold sittings on Tuesday mornings and on Wednesday. Ta touch on the tax policy, the touch on the banking sector, microfinance, the ease of doing business in the country, so that. So, um, at this moment, we will leave the stage. Let us thank uh, all the participants for the first
By the time the leadership is seeing it, the public has already interacted with it, and you are being, your views are being sought on something that probably you have not interacted with. This is 50% of these motions. Now that the space for Wednesday morning is a space for individual members, it is also the space for bills by individual members. In the December adjournment will be five sitting weeks. Five sitting weeks is essentially about 25 sittings. No, no, four times five, 20 sittings. And out of those 20 sittings, only four were first time members. Mr. Speaker, we also request more presence. There are a number of instances when we have, especially Wednesday after question, Tuesday late in the evening, 